Okay, so he chose to heal the engineer back up. Um, didn't use any consumables. Uh, still passive move uh, from him. He's really hanging on to his uh, power items um, with a kind of a death grip. But that's okay because um, we can just finish the trade now. We want him to stomp this Axor because when we stomp the Axor, we have this move um, here. Except with Rage, that'll kill everything. There's a bunch of interesting um, offensive moves that I can play from here. Um, for example, this move is kind of cute. Watch this Engineer. Which just gets annihilated because I pull the, uh, the gunner up uh, onto the, the train tile. Which then does the damage to the Engineer and then promptly stomps it right off. Which is kind of uh, cute, but um, I can do um, a move that will uh, KO this Paladin, and this pro this move is probably good enough to win off of. But um, he could spend both drills on the Chieftain and then uh, heal up the Paladin, and maybe like beer them both or something like that, and. Um, I mean, that'd be okay, but really, I just want to uh, win it with the move instead of come 90% of the way to winning and then still leave him an opening to eventually, you know, mess me up later. So this is the nice, safe move. Um, I get a unit guaranteed for this XR, so we're already trading one for one. It's perfect. Got my chieftain all ready to go here, and now there's only one one engineer left. So there's only he can only make one unit safe from a chieftain bomb, and he's all the way packed in his corner. So he's all grouped up and ready, and he's got to find some way to deal with this axe or um, and prevent me from healing it up because I can go here and here next turn, and then I've got the 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 path to heal um, this Axor up. So he's going to have to deal with it eventually. Um, and it's just a matter of time. As soon as he deals with it, this Chieftain's ready to go. So there's really not that much to, to talk about here. Um, if he is somehow able to stabilize, then I'll start deploying my uh, Spike Shields. Um, but right now, I see the opportunity to, to win the game since he doesn't have his Annihilator out and these two Paladins are clumped up. So... Um, I'm going to see if I can force him into it. Okay, that's pretty nice. Alright, this is um, kind of a game-changing move uh, in some ways because he has put the shield and the helm on his paladin. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag for me. Basically, uh, it, it means that one of my win conditions is harder and one of my win conditions is easier. I was trying to get the win by killing both of those paladins. That's going to be more difficult now um, since the, uh, the paladin has a ton of upgrades. It almost makes it nearly unkillable. Maybe not completely. With warriors... Um, it becomes possible. Now he doesn't have any defensive upgrades for his annihilators or any of his gunners. So um, my strategy now is probably to kill all his attacking units and win from there. I really want to save this axe thrower, but um, saving it is problematic. I could do something like this potentially to try and force him to stomp it, but um, but I think I have um, potentially a better move. Um, it's actually an interesting play. Let's do this. Then he, he'd have to stomp it then. This may be objectively better than what I was actually planning on doing before I started talking about this video. Um, 
The downside is that he can stomp this axe thrower just by moving on the train tile. But the um, but the positive is that he can't both kill this axe thrower and kill this chieftain. Um, he would have to go one, two. Yeah, he can only KO the the um, the chieftain that way. The only way. Uh, oops. All right. The only way he can kill this chieftain is by double drilling it, and then going. One, two, three. Or I guess technically he could send this paladin over, but that would be suicidal because my um, my warrior would just take it out. Um, but yeah, this would force him to give me a rage, and uh, well, actually, it, it wouldn't necessarily because he could go with the annihilator. One, two and hit my uh, warrior three times, and it would actually KO the Axar and move the Axar down here, which would be really annoying. So actually, this is actually a bad move. Um, let's not do that. Okay, back to the original plan. <laughs> After a little detour, I thought I found something special, but I didn't. Um, so we're, we want to trade uh, against his units. Now, I'm going to give up on trying to save the Axar. Because I don't think there's a good way to do it. And instead, I'm going to do this play. Now, this means that the, this chieftain's probably going to die. But here's the deal. I got one of his last three attacking units. And he ha I've, if I have calculated this correctly, in order to stomp this chieftain without using both drills he has to give up one of his other attacking units. Because if he comes like here, and then attacks with the scroll, and then two more attacks, and then stomps uh, with the paladin, if he does that, then um, I can actually just meet kill this paladin. Um, so that's okay. Um, if, if he chooses to, to give up the paladin, that that's a win condition as well. Um, but if he stomps with the gunner, then obviously I can just kill the gunner with the witch here. Um, if he uses like an annihilator drill combo, if he deploys the annihilator at all, really, um, I guess he could try to do something cute by like moving the, um, the paladin up here and then deploying the annihilator back here and then attacking and drilling and then stopping with this paladin potentially. Um, but that would just this paladin would die so um so that move is kind of questionable and even then i could just go one two and meet attack this gunner here with the with the witch and then i'm taking out a scroll um which would be really nice so pretty much any any way that he stomps this uh chieftain is going to be pretty nice for me um i'm going to get something in return and we've already traded the axe thrower for um now a gunner and engineer, so we're, we're trading units one for one, and I have a lot more units than him, so if we keep trading, well, eventually he's going to run out of things to trade with, um, and then I'm just going to win. And he also has to spend an offensive consumable item to kill this chieftain. It's not possible for him to kill it um, any other way. He has to spend either a drill or a scroll. Um, so yeah, this puts him under a lot of pressure, um, and I don't think there's a good way for him to... To, to deal with it, he's going to be left with one offensive unit left after next turn, if I've calculated everything correctly. And um, and he'll be down an offensive item. And he won't have the defensive upgrades to put on his last offensive unit. So he's got a huge weak point, and I can just spend the tidal wave to pull the last offensive unit forward um, to kill it safely with my plethora of offensive items. Yeah, I think that even though I will lose this chieftain here, um, it's okay. I've got an easy path to heal it up if, in case he just decides to leave it dead um, by moving this axe thrower down a square and then this chain heal goes all the way up and I can just retreat him. I could go down here and then I could move, I could heal and then this would be the third AP, fourth AP, and then heal from the attack tie, bring him up to 700, which would be potentially game ending. Alright. That's settled for this one. Still haven't played a freaking spike shield. What a crazy game. 
Here we go. All right, good. So my uh, prediction held that um, I would get another unit uh, out of this trade here. So let's see, how many attacking units do I have left? I've got, okay, so I'll have four. Four against one, that's good odds. <laughs> um, okay, so there's really only two moves that are worth considering. This move, That's one. And this is two. Um, yeah, it's just down to which unit I want to take. Now, obviously, in a normal situation, I would like to take the Annihilator out because the um, Annihilator does more damage. And the Annihilator has the, the annoying um, knock around effect. But in this situation, I think it's actually better to take out the gunner. There's a few reasons for that that um, are just math. Um, one, the gunner has a scroll. If I can kill the gunner now, then he uh, he doesn't get to use the scroll. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and that's trading a plus one chieftain, two meats and a witch for uh, two gunners and a scroll, which in this case, I mean, under normal situations, um, oh, in a drill for him. So that's, uh, that's four. That's four, and I traded five, but so that's like still a pretty good trade. Um, and it's, it's even units for units um, when I have more, but I think it will be a lot easier for me to um, kill this annihilator. And there's a few reasons. Um, one, the maximum resistance to damage this Annihilator can get is 10%. That's if he's next to both Paladins, because he has no more defensive items left. That means he's no way of increasing his HP, so he's stuck at a max of 650. I'm going to have a Witch. It's still in my hand, because he's probably going to have to kill this guy. He probably won't stomp the Witch, and I'll just let it die. It's not worth trying to hang on to. Um, all I'll need to do is retreat and uh, put on my spike shields, which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, yeah, so 650 with 10% resistance. Well, with the meats, the meats do 550 plus regular attacks are 200. So um, I can get up to 750 damage in 3 AP. And with 10% resistance to that damage, that goes down to 675, which is still more than 650. So I always have a 3 AP KO on this Annihilator, no matter what he's doing, unless he has a bubble, um, but fine. Um, additionally, I have all these spike shields left. So I'm going to be able to put a spike shield on almost all my units remaining. And um, the Annihilator is going to have his bubble popped by not only any spike shield unit he attacks, but if there's a spike shield unit that is adjacent what, either diagonally or directly adjacent to any unit that I have on the board. So um, he's going to have a lot harder time uh, keeping a bubble on there. So in my opinion, it's going to be a pretty easy to deal with this Annihilator. And keep in mind that this Axe Thrower with the meat can always just one-shot the uh, the Annihilator because that does 750. So uh, I think this is the the best move clearly and now he doesn't have both drills anymore so um his possibilities of uh taking out my shamans are a lot more limited um because he can't uh he can't magically do damage to both of them and even if he were to get me down to one shaman he if i retreated it into the corner um he would have no way of KOing it um just through items alone so yeah, I think uh, we're well on our way to wrapping this game up, and uh, hopefully I draw one of my units instead of my fourth spike shield. That would be really trolly if I... Um... Oh, I, I have a sword left too. Okay. Yeah, so I, I can draw either a sword or... Um, sword, spike shield, or one of my two units. So I'd really like to draw the, the one of these two units. Um, 
it, well, it's pretty much fine no matter what. Because next turn, I'm just going to put all my spike shields on my units. It kind of ends up being a moot point. What I draw, but whatever. So, here we go. Alright, cool. Got a warrior. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much exactly uh, what I expected. Um, now, all I need to do is retreat and buff up with a bunch of spike shields and uh, tell them to bring it on. So the exact move that I want to do is this. Um, there's not much complexity to this move, but there's some small optimizations here that um, are interesting. I could have done something like this instead with the two spike shields as well, but I'm not doing that. Um, because if he were to use the Annihilator on this uh, uh, warrior here, my shamans would go flying into the corners. Everybody would go flying everywhere, which would be really annoying. Um, because I want to keep the shaman on the attack tile for the healing. So I'm, I don't want to have a unit here so that my units don't get knocked around like crazy. Um, instead... I want to stack up my units here such that if he attacks this warrior nothing's going to get knocked back because this warrior can't fly back because he's uh, that, that square is occupied by the shaman. Um, additionally if he attacks this warrior it's going to do the splash damage to this warrior with the spike shield so um, it's going to pop his bubble on the annihilator which is lovely. Um, furthermore uh, I want this unit to be in front because uh, if he attacks the Annihilator it's going to get the minus 50% debuff and I'd rather that debuff be on a non-spike shielded unit rather than a spike shielded one. Um, now we'll see. Uh, it probably won't end up mattering because I have, I have a spike shield for every offensive unit I have left on the board which is ridiculous. But we'll see. It's possible I may end up putting that um, spike shield on a shaman instead or something, because that would make it safe from a scroll attack on the annihilator. So we'll we'll have to see. But I'm turning three cards, so I'm going to draw the rest of my deck here. So there's going to be no more no more randomness, and um, I'll have to figure out how to to crack his defenses here. All right, the cleanup continues. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so you can see my formation here is doing wonders. Um, look how painful it is for him to attack into my uh, units here. He came up and just took one shot on this warrior here, and then he had to rebubble and then retreat. That's how um, tenuous a position is for him. So we're not in any rush here. Um, it's really difficult for him to attack into us, so we just need to um, finish developing the board and setting up the position that we really want um, before we go in for the, the big attack. So um, one thing we're definitely going to do is we're going to heal up the warrior, but I'm going to get this witch out, and we're going to play this exact move right here. Um, the reason that we're playing this exact move is he's got his engineer up front, um, which is blocking the way to his annihilator and really what I want to do is I want to um, set up a move where I can tidal wave this engineer forward um, and then just get a kill on it. He uh, basically has to try and KO this uh, warrior here. He would have to use a scroll to do it or he could try to drill off the spike shield um, but I need to be careful with how I deploy my items so what I don't want to happen is I don't want to put the sword on the axe thrower or the witch until the annihilator is dead unless um, unless there's like some other obvious game winning move 
because if the Annihilator debuff gets on a sorted unit, then he can just spend the drill to KO it in one shot um, and stomp it with like the engineer or something. Um, and uh, and then I could potentially be giving up um, some of my, my lead here. So I just want to hang on to the sword because as long as I keep trading eventually, um, you know, if I, if I kill the Annihilator, uh, then I can just sword whatever unit I want afterwards and it's going to be okay. But if I, if I play it now, even though it may add to my offensive capabilities, I don't really need more offensive capabilities because all these warriors and these axe throwers can three shot any of his units, especially if I'm able to tidal wave this uh, engineer forward. And once the, uh, the engineer is gone, then he has no bubbles and it's going to be next to impossible to keep this, um, this annihilator alive with the possibility of a meat plus axe thrower um, out on the board. So yeah, this is um, just kind of tightening my grip on this game. Um, I don't think there's anything magical he can do to, to play his way out of this. We'll see what he manages to come up with. But if he extends beyond you know, his back two uh, columns here, then the tidal wave is just going to pull him forward. Um, and if he stays back, then I'm just going to extend the map and uh, eventually be able to trade against him. So uh, it's checkmate. We just got to play it out. Wow. Look how painful it is for him to try and attack into all these spike shields with just the annihilator. He had to spend five AP doing one attack on the axe thrower. Um, so, uh, like I said last turn, I think I said it, I wanted to be threatening this engineer. And what I want to do now is I want to trade the tidal wave for the engineer. It's going to be his last uh, shield going off the annihilator. And after that, the math is going to get a lot easier uh, for me because I can stay on my side of the map and still uh, deal with deal with the annihilator um, pretty easily. The only real thing to think about is there's a, a number of variations that I can play um, that are pretty minor. Like for example, I could move this axe thrower down or even forward, like here. Yeah, I could potentially even stomp with the axe thrower, or I could stomp with the warrior, or I could even corpse explode, um, and all those different moves put my units in various positions. Um, and so I need to find the one that works the best um, that's going to set me up for next round. Um, what I want him to do is I just want him to have to retreat the Annihilator um, without taking any units. But if he does take a unit, I want him to take this Warrior because it doesn't have a spike shield. And it's already got the uh, the damage uh, buff on it. The damage boof. <laughs> the damage boof, yes. Um, and I don't think I really want to move this axe thrower because if I move him here, then annihilator attack is gonna like send all these units all over the place, um, which is not really ideal. Um, so I kind of like the the axe where it is, um, and he can't really do anything about that because once this uh, engineer is gone, it's gonna take at best he could drill this, and then two, three, four, five. In which case I just go one two with the witch meat attack and it's gone so um so yeah, even even the best case he can't kill the axe thrower without giving up his annihilator and obviously once he's down to two paladins because with paladins amusingly enough um i can sword my warrior um sorted warriors are actually surprisingly good at dealing with paladins it's pretty funny but it is true they are um they're pretty good at it um, if, if the end game comes to that, but, uh, so I think this is the best formation here. Um, I might get my, uh, warrior knocked down here, but as long as he just ends up retreating without killing anything, um, it's going to be okay. I guess he could like scroll kill this warrior, but if he wants to spend scrolls, um, then I want it to be on a non spike shielded unit and a non scrolled and a non sorted unit so um he's welcome to uh to give me rage in that manner 
And now this Axor can kill any unit. Um, one, two, meat attack, yeah. So he would have to retreat. Um, yeah, any Anything in this area my Axor can get to and uh, kill the Annihilator. So he's going to have to uh, like, retreat to the complete opposite side of the map. Yeah, if he scrolled... Um, well, if it did, uh, what's half of 650? 325? Sounds about right. So if you were to give me Rage, then the Spike Shield would have to do 25 damage to him. Um, yeah, so I, I even think that if he scrolled to kill this warrior, the, uh, the splash damage reflected from the Spike Shield would do enough for me to kill the Annihilator with the warrior. Uh, l let alone the the witch. Yeah, th th there's no way out of this. <laughs> this is this is fine. Okay. Wow. What? <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I think this game is going to end sooner rather than later. Um, this is kind of a give up play, I think. Um. This is a cute move, getting the debuffs on both of the shamans. Um, it would be genuinely scary if he actually had both drills, but since he only has one, it's actually not that scary at all. Um, so I'm going to continue to play it extremely safe. Um, so this means killing the Annihilator and setting myself up to remove these debuffs from me. Now you say, what? Remove these debuffs? How can you remove debuffs? Well, we gotta train. And we can deal damage to ourselves. Now, I don't actually want to do it with the warrior this round, because I don't care about the warrior. The warrior doesn't matter. He's not important. It's the shamans that matter. Um, so I, next turn, I want to remove the debuffs from the shamans, just to make sure that he can't drill and kill one in one uh, one hit. And I will have plenty of time to do so. Let me just heal up the other shaman here. And then next turn, I'll go like up here, and then up here, and then I'll heal everybody. And yeah, we'll just kind of play this out nice and slow. I do actually have an extra AP here. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and heal this witch. Or no, I can heal this. Uh, I can heal both shamans. Yeah, I like that play. Anyway, this is uh, this is wrapping up here. Once I remove these uh, debuffs, I'll just death march my way um, to his paladins. All right, here comes the all in. There it is. Yeah. So he he's trying to set up a play where he can go one two, three, attack this shaman, and then drill this shaman. Um, and that's really his only path to victory. Um, my long-term game is I'm going to sort up this warrior, because with this sorted warrior, um, I believe I can take down half of his health in one shot. Really? No, that's... I'm 5 HP short. Oh, that's garbage. Really? Well, whatever. Um... I can bring down this paladin in three hits with the sort of warrior, and then once he's down to one paladin, then it's over because he um, can't heal the paladin except through uh, beers, and it's not sustainable for him. But um, but first, I have to make sure I don't lose my shamans or anything silly because that's like the only conceivable way that I could lose. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to remove. Whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to remove this debuff here by damaging my own shamans because the drills, the scroll only kills me in one hit with the uh, the minus 50% defense debuff on there. So if I get rid of that debuff, then his combo doesn't work anymore. And I'm gonna do that by 
attacking myself with the train and then I'm going to move here and here so now he doesn't have any adjacent squares to my shaman and he's also in the attack tile and I'm just going to heal this shaman right back up and also heal the switch up to full um, because there's no way for him to win um, unless he's able to kill my shamans I mean that's just the move um, once if he could try and come like one two three attack with the drill and then stomp um and if he does that then i can just retreat this last shaman into the corner and since his drill is gone um i feel a lot more comfortable uh sorting my last uh the this this wizard here and then just playing it out from there it's a little slower but um i think it's okay um because i i would have like these two units blocking the path to the attack tile so i'm not sure i could um Not sure I could outright um, KO the Paladin on my attack tile, but um, um, yeah, I think that's uh, all there is to this move. Um, if I get a chance, if he doesn't drill stop me this turn, I'll just remove the debuff from this uh, Shaman as well, and um, that will make things uh, even I mean, make me even more resistant to the drill. All right. So this is exactly why it was important to remove the debuff from the shaman. Um, I think maybe it would have been wiser to um, position myself slightly different. Perhaps I'm not sure if I could have done anything different last turn actually. Um, but anyway, so it's still fine. Um, there's a few options here. Uh, I could play really safe and just move my shaman into the corner and that way this he can't move onto this deploy tile so that protects me and he'd never be able to attack that shaman um but that's going to lead to a long game and that's annoying um and i think i have a move that's just as good but um i'll actually end the game a lot faster and that's actually to move here and just kill this paladin um the reason this is such a, a nice move is if he wants to revive his paladin he's going to go one two three or potentially three here and then heal this paladin up but um if he heals the paladin up it will actually use his scroll because when you heal um it'll spend that so um yeah, he'll have to uh, spend the scroll healing his own paladin. Alternatively, he can just go for broke and attack uh, my shaman and my witch, but um, I don't believe that is uh, a feasible plan either. If he beers, um, so he would like attack the shaman and then attack the witch three times, or vice versa and then use the last uh, move to beer because the spike shield would damage his paladin um, and so otherwise the the warrior could execute it hmm. that, that could actually potentially be dangerous because i'm not sure if i could kill the paladin exactly in the next turn i don't think it'd be that dangerous yeah i think it would still be fine but it just it gets it you, you could get into the situation where it's a little dicey where um he could uh eventually get back to his own crystal and then it'd be annoying because i'd have to like put a unit here and then come over here and over here and attack it once and then go back and then go back and it wouldn't it wouldn't take forever because i could just put the other unit on the attack the uh, gem tile and he, he can never attack into me. yeah i'm i'm wondering if i mean i i'm like 99.5 percent confident this play will work um but i want to be 100 percent confident and um i think it may actually just be better to play play it safe out and uh, wait, because now he's got he's he's burned the drill, so you just move away uh, from the attack tile, and then you sort up this warrior, and then you go over here, and um, you basically dare him to do anything, and uh, pretty much no matter what he does, uh, I can either start to chip away at the crystals, or um, yeah, it, it can pretty much do whatever I want from this situation, so. Um, yeah, this is 
this is the non-risky play. And also with the rage, this warrior with the meat can just straight up one shot uh, the, this paladin here and then stomp it as long as it can move with, within two, uh, two squares of it. And the, I could use it on the, um, the witch too. Maybe I should move it slightly differently. Maybe here, here, and here. This might actually be uh, slightly better because he can't actually kill this warrior. But then you could hide the paladin in the corner, which would be annoying. I might have to spend the, the rage on it. Yeah, I think it. My, what, what I came up with before was okay. Because it's closer to my shaman. I wonder what kind, how many how many hits it's gonna take to KO. That's so annoying. It's like uh, 15 HP short of being able to execute. Now with with rage, obviously, I can get there pretty easily. That's um. That's still like an well, it's just one one more attack. Maybe this is better. I should have planned this move out better before starting the commentary. Normally I have things locked down pretty well, but in this case, yeah, because that way I'm threatening like the paladin. Um, I can just come here potentially. He might try to kill my warrior in this circumstance, but uh, that's fine. Because I, uh, I could move here and then here and then uh, kill the paladin with meat. Really all I need to do is just KO one unit um, and keep my shaman alive and it's over. I mean, it, it, just generally speaking, it's over, but <laughs> yeah, because you could go one, two, attack, and because of the damage debuff, I think that would be enough to one-shot it. Well, it's going to do 600 times 1.3. Go, go, handy, Google. That's, oh, it's only 780, so you actually couldn't KO it in one hit. Okay, well that doesn't that that he can't kill me with that either, so this is looking fine honestly. Um, let's see what else one, two. He could actually KO that warrior though. It's kind of annoying. Maybe it is better to um. Move this guy over here. In that case, because then if if he uh, moves the paladin up here, then I can just kill this paladin. And if, if he spreads out his paladins, I may just go for the crystal kill because I can sit on this uh, the tactile forever, and I can actually have a nice little slot here where I can move my shaman to this square. I was even thinking of doing that moving up up there that actually may be better doing something like this where I'm saying hey you can um, you can KO my shaman but uh, I will take uh, I'll take your your paladin in exchange which would be fine because he can't move here and he can't move here because my witch is blocking it and if he moves here, then he's on the train tracks. Um, and so all I need to do is get him low. And I could KO him pretty quickly. And then stomp him with the train. Yeah, I think this is actually the most optimized move. Because you can't kill this warrior. And any sort of offensive play... The shaman's in position to heal all these units up immediately. Yeah, I, I think this is fine. Let's just go with this. Took me a while to get to this conclusion. It's it's one of those situations where you're like, you're like at the supermarket and there's like five equally good choices, and so you just stare at them, um, trying to pick which one you want, even though they're all like pretty much equally good. You just can't decide because they're so much the same and you're trying to figure out like, oh, which one is really the best out of these? 
but it's hard because they're all the same. Anyway, good story. Oh, well, that's really trolly. Um, okay. Well, uh, again, this this move doesn't really accomplish anything other than it keeps him alive another round, which is fine, I guess. Um, so I have two options here. One is I can just go kill his crystals. Um, I'm going to do that. I actually want to uh, spike shield the shaman. But yeah, that's an option that will work perfectly fine. Um, the other option is to do something like this. Where um, basically I'm saying, okay, if you figure out some way around this next turn, I'll start killing your crystals with the witch. But otherwise, this warrior is going to kill something next turn. <laughs> And he would have to like beer both of his, um, both of the units in order to be safe. And even if he does that, then I can just, uh, I, I can give up the tribal rage because even without tribal rage, I can still kill his, um, his back paladin, uh, in two shots, uh, without it. So, and he, he can KO this warrior with the scrolled, um, paladin, but, um, He's going to be attacking into the spike shield, and he has to use all five AP to do it. So he wouldn't be able to heal himself up. So I could just heal up my warrior, and then um, and then, and then attack, and uh, attack twice, and then stomp, and that would be the end of that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he can't actually run away from this one. Um, he could like start trying to kill my crystals, but I've got the gem tile, so who cares? But I think this is actually finally checkmate. Um, Although uh, this game has been over for a long time, um, I did spike this sh spike shield of the shaman because it brings him to 880, which means it's gonna take him an extra AP to kill the shaman, which means he can't go one, two, three, and then attack the shaman twice um, because it actually wouldn't kill my shaman. All right, well, let's let's lock it in, boys. March of the Paladins. Okay, well, here we are. Uh, <laughs> what, a, what a silly couple of turns here. Uh, fortunately, this ends the silliness um, as I can uh, just take this Paladin down here and that will, um, that will kind of end the uh, dramatics. So um, one way I can do this is uh, by killing it with the warrior. Um, which is fine. Um, that will get the job done. But frankly, there's no need to use this meat because um, this warrior is good enough to get the job done as well. He uses one more AP, but who really cares? Because as soon as he kills any unit, uh, he can't kill this um, warrior. And uh, this warrior uh, will either two or three shot this paladin whenever it's out from behind his crystals and uh, I can easily chip him down. So this is officially the end and I would expect a resignation next turn unless he's just gonna leave his paladin out because it's at this point it's completely futile to prolong it any longer. So uh, yeah, not much to say about this. Uh, this game dragged on a little bit longer than it needed to but I was playing completely safe and um, it's okay to win maybe three or four turns slower than you could have because um, you don't get more points for winning quick. It's just win or lose.